80 words per minute for 9 minutes. 5 seconds more. Start. Honorable members of the First Indian Constituent Assembly, I am deeply beholden to you for your having agreed to accept me as the first president of your constituent assembly which will enable me to assist you in transacting the preliminary business before the house which will ultimately lead you to crown your labors by formulating a suitable and stable constitution for an independent India. I have had in my fairly long life several honors conferred on me in recognition of my services as a humble worker in public interest, but I assure you that I regard your mark of favor as a signal honor which I shall cherish throughout the rest of my life. On this historic and memorable occasion, you will not grudge, I am sure, if I venture to address to you some observations on certain aspects of what is called a constituent assembly. This political method of devising a constitution for a country has not been known to our fellow subjects in Britain for the simple reason that under the British constitution there is no such thing as a constituent law, it being a cherished privilege of the British Parliament as the sole sovereign authority to make and unmake all laws including the constitutional law of the country. As such, we have to look to countries other than Britain to be able to form a correct estimate of the position of a constituent assembly. In Europe, the oldest republic, that of Switzerland, has not had a constituent law in the ordinary sense of that term for it came into existence on a much smaller scale than it now exists due to historic causes and accidents several centuries back. Nevertheless, the present constitutional system of Switzerland has several notable and instructive features which have strongly been recommended by qualified authorities to Indian constitution makers and I have no doubt that this great assembly will study carefully the Swiss constitution and try to utilize it to the best advantage in the interest of preparing a suitable constitution for a free and independent India. It may possibly be that in some such scheme, skillfully adapted to our own requirements, a satisfactory solution may be found for a constitution for an independent India. Until the adoption of the resolution on Pakistan in March 1940 by the Muslim League, 
that political organization had not favored the idea of a constituent assembly as a proper and suitable method for framing a constitution for this country after the adoption of that resolution however the attitude of the muslim league seems to have undergone a change in favor of the idea of a constituent assembly one for the areas claimed by the league for a separate muslim state and the other for the rest of india thus it may be stated that the idea of a constituent assembly as the only direct means for the framing of a constitution in this country came to be entertained and accepted by the two major political parties in 1940 with this difference that while the congress desired one constituent assembly for india as a whole the muslim league wanted two constituent assemblies in accordance with its demand for two separate states in the country we are meeting however in this assembly today under the scheme propounded by the british cabinet mission which though differing from the suggestions made on the subject by the congress the league and other political organizations had devised a scheme which though not by all had been accepted by many political parties and also by those not belonging to any political party as one well worth giving a trial with a view to end the political deadlock honorable members i fear i have trespassed long on your patience and should now bring my remarks to a close my only justification for having detained you so long is the uniqueness of this great and memorable occasion in the history of india the enthusiasm with which this constituent assembly had been welcomed by large classes of people in this country and the prospect which it holds out for the final settlement of the problem of all problems and the issue of all issues namely the political independence of india and her economic freedom i wish your labors success and invoke divine blessings that your proceedings may be marked by good sense public spirit genuine patriotism wisdom toleration justice and fairness to all and above all with a vision which may restore india to her pristine glory and give her a place of honor and equality amongst the great nations of the world where there is no vision the people perish